In this week's episode of the LA Business Podcast, we talk to TK Pillen, the executive chairman and founder of Veggie Grill, a $52 million uh, restaurant based in Los Angeles. If you've ever wanted to eat really great tasting veggies, this is the man who made that happen. Um, let's jump right into this week's episode of the LA Business Podcast. Welcome to the LA Business Podcast, your destination to hear stories of how businesses grow and scale. I'm Robert Brill, CEO of Brill Media and the host of this podcast. Now, let's jump right into this week's interview. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the LA Business Podcast. Today, our guest is TK Pillan. Uh, founder and executive chairman of Veggie Grill, a delicious chain of restaurants uh, based in Culver City uh, with over 700 employees and uh, $52 million in sales. Thanks for being with us today, TK. Appreciate it. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. So tell us about your journey, why and how you started Veggie Grill and kind of like how, how tell us about the ethos behind Veggie Grill because it's such an interesting concept. Sure. Well, it's not the typical journey of a restaurateur. I went to MIT undergrad and uh, worked in the systems world and got my MBA and started an e-commerce development company in the mid nineties during the first wave of the internet. And so I had a very successful tech career. That company grew very quickly and I sold, sold a piece of it at the right time and sold out completely in 2004. And that's when I had a blank slate and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my business career. And Got really honed in on um, the lack of wellness uh, in the U.S. And uh, I came from a holistic uh, food as medicine background and really honed, started focusing on, hey, how could I create a business that could make a difference? And, and then I got honed in on, hey, it's just hard to go out and find delicious, convenient, healthy food. And, uh, and I started doing my research there, and that led me to plant-based eating. And I became, through some research, I discovered a lot of the powerful benefits of, uh, of eating plant-based and tried it myself and had great results. I lost uh, 20 pounds. My cholesterol went from over 200 to under 150 and uh, just felt great. My workouts were getting a lot better. I was a college athlete and I was getting back to where I was in my younger 20s. And, um, and then through the research really, you know, discovered, hey, there is decent uh, vegan food out there. It's just not being presented in a fun, friendly, approachable way that uh, non-vegans and vegetarians would uh, would gravitate towards. And so that was the vision behind uh, starting Veggie Grill. Right. And, you know, as a as an avid meat eater myself and, and someone who uh, who really enjoys uh, taking pleasure in some good food, I've noticed that Veggie Grill really presents itself as a as a place where anyone can can come and have a really good, healthy meal and also have a very tasty meal and, and enjoy enjoy it it's not for sure the name veggie is in in the in in the name but it seems like it's for everyone it's not just for vegetarians yeah for sure um yeah what we the ethos really is about there is no sacrifice this is great food and a fun uh casual environment and it's just uh and it's just enjoyable it just happens to not use animals. And, uh, and there's a lot of benefits to that from a health standpoint, no cholesterol, no animal fat. Uh, and from an environmental standpoint, it's more sustainable for the future of the planet. So, but people eat first and foremost to satisfy themselves and enjoy themselves. And that's what we do. We provide food that does that. And, and when did you uh, start Veggie Grill? Uh, 2006. And so tell us about, tell us about the growth, like were there key period, key milestones that you can share with us? On, on how it became, sure. how it became such a big company. Sure. Yeah. Well, anybody who's uh, started a restaurant knows that the first step is getting the first one open and hoping people come in and come back. And we, you know, we definitely took a big leap of faith back in 2006, opening a uh, uh, a vegan restaurant. That hope we were hoping to become a chain back then. People um, really uh, vegan was a really polarizing. Uh, niche term at the time. And uh, we were just hoping people would give us a try and wouldn't just uh, because we were vegetarian and vegan, not even walk in the door. And so we did everything possible to create a fun, friendly, approachable uh, setting and environment and uh, uh, an overall branding. We, we thought we knew the food was good. We just wanted people to come in and try it. And hopefully once they tried it, they would come back. And so luckily the first restaurant worked. We put all the right pieces together from the food, the experience, 
the overall setting, the brand vibe and the menu itself. And uh, so I was first, you know, first number one uh, milestone. And then it's like, okay, we have a concept that works in one location. Can you make it work across uh, multiple locations? And so we tackled that and we, we launched seven across LA and Orange County, raised some money from friends and family. Uh, we, we, we put in all the money to start the first one ourselves and then raised money to grow it. And, uh, and then we had seven locations in LA and Orange County that were all doing well. And so then it came time to say, okay, let's take this to other regions. And that's when we ended up uh, bringing on a private equity firm to support the capital that it would take to, to, to take that step along with bringing on a much more seasoned uh, executive team that had uh, uh, grown restaurant concepts before. So that was a, a, a big third milestone. And, and here we are today on that journey of really going across the nation and creating a national brand that hopefully continues to help people uh, begin, advance, and enjoy their their overall plant based journey. And when you're looking at the the first seven, um, the first seven store expansion, are there? Did you what did you learn along the way that allowed you to kind of like scale that business? Because I imagine it's difficult making one successful restaurant and then to do that times seven. Yeah. Uh, I, I imagine there's unforeseen circumstances there. Uh, even even the most uh, respected uh, executive or entrepreneur might have some challenges. What were some of the things that you experienced along the way as you grew from one to seven? Because that, that seems like a very big step there. Sure. Yeah, it's a big step for any restaurateur because uh, you all of a sudden uh, aren't running those restaurants. If you've mm-hmm. got seven restaurants, you're not running them. Uh, you've got to put in a system uh, that has the right uh, processes to allow general managers of each of the, those locations to deliver that same experience that uh, made the first one successful. And uh, it uh, involves a lot of detail, you know, from the kitchen side, you've got to make sure everybody in that kitchen is trained properly to deliver the same exact food they, uh, at each location that the, the guest is uh, expecting. And then um, on the front front side of it, that uh, the staff is trained to deliver the same hospitality and fun, friendly, approachable environment. Um, so it really, it along with picking the right locations, which is also a big piece of the restaurant game, uh, it really is about uh, people and making sure you've got the right process and the right people to deliver that exact same experience that that worked in the first location. So, so now, you know, we're recording this at the beginning of 2022. This marks the second massive economic downturn that you've experienced as 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 the lead here on on veggie grill like like what tell us about your experience in the great recession 2007 8 9 how did that fare for you yeah that we we were young uh at, at that point we had two or three restaurants we started the first one in 2006 the second one in 2008 so we uh we got a little downturn but uh we were so new and innovative uh, that we were con- able to continue to grow based on the uniqueness of what we were delivering. And, um, and so it didn't hit us as hard as, uh, as COVID has hit us, right? COVID has been a huge disruption to uh, the restaurant business. And so we had to uh, do a lot of work, right? You know, it's, you got to make quick decisions. You got to uh, uh, make sure you're prioritizing the right things and, you uh, Luckily, uh, we had to close several restaurants during the height of COVID and then uh, reopen them. And uh, so we went through that process. Uh, we had to close them down again and then reopen them yeah. again and yeah. get the food in and out. And yeah. Yeah. So luckily, we did have the right people, the right core leadership team to help make those quick, hard decisions. And uh, I had been through it a little bit because I was through the uh, dot com uh, 1.0 bubble burst. And, right. Uh, you know, understood that, hey, you know, you, you can't blink. You just got to, you can't, you got to make decisions in the best interest of the peop- of the business while at the si- same time having compassion for the people on your team and uh, doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, um, you've got to control what you can control. Yeah. And so, so coming out of, of, of COVID, you, you know, the entire restaurant industry has had some major hurdles to clear. Um, what does what does the business look like for 2022 um, at the very start of this year, right? Like we have Omicron kind of like becoming a thing again, but it doesn't look like things are going to get shut down, but other countries are shut down. Like how do you 
how do you deal like how do you make decisions in such an uncertain environment? Yeah. Um, well, you've got to make decisions. You've got to understand the situation, look at the facts. Um, and uh, I'm proud of what we did in 2020 and 2021. We, we had to quickly pivot into survival mode in 2020 and uh, did what we needed to do to survive. And, and then we quickly looked at uh, how do we start thriving again? And uh, we actually created two new brands under the veggie grill umbrella. We created a, uh, a digital virtual only brand called Moss Veggies Vegan Taqueria that delivers the best uh, best in what you could get in plant-based Mexican food, delicious burritos, tacos, bowls, and nachos with an amazing selection of plant-based fillings and uses the veggie grill kitchens as ghost kitchens. So that's been a nice additional driver of revenue for us when in an in a environment where people aren't going to dining rooms as often. So that was a big uh, pivot and uh, innovation, innovation for us that... Uh, uh, COVID forced us to uh, to create, but now we're really happy we have it. And uh, we created a third brand, Stand Up Burgers, which is a mini veggie grill, just focused on the burger side of what we deliver and adding in shakes and creating a, a much simpler, easier to operate uh, uh, menu and restaurant that delivers great satisfaction and indulgence to a certain audience that just wants burgers and shakes, doesn't need the dining room experience as much as uh, what we deliver at Veggie Grill. So we have these two additional concepts that really do allow us to uh, to grow in a um, in a more meaningful way than we had pre-COVID. So we feel really good about the foundation we have, and we're starting to step on the gas. We're getting ready to launch uh, uh, four new stand-up burgers, uh, hopefully two in in the uh, LA region in within the next uh, five months, uh, the first half of the year, we're continuing, we're, we, we feel like not a lot of people know about Moss Veggies. It's off to a nice start without any marketing. So we're gonna start really marketing that uh, more aggressively. And we're, we've are we got a new brand platform we're integrating into Veggie Grill. So all that to say, hey, we've got a plan. We're, we're, we're going on, on the offense. Uh, Omicron certainly has um, uh, hit us a little bit with less people going out, but we're, we're pretty, bullish on the foundation we have, and we're just going to keep charging forward knowing that, uh, uh, you know, we, we feel like uh, we'll be in good shape if we do that. You know, it's interesting. It, it almost, it, it strikes me that you're, you're kind of like building a, you're a platform company, a, a veggie plat, like, I, I don't know, like you coming from tech, it probably, it probably makes a lot of sense to you, right? Like, and probably that, that might be your vision, right? Like, but to me, as, as an outsider looking in, it's like, man, okay, so these people know how to make veggies be tasty. And now it's like, how many different ways can we create a really great experience for people to 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 enjoy and eat vegetables in a way that's healthy and fulfilling? Is is that part of, is that your strategy there? Yeah, yeah. What we you know during COVID, uh, we looked hard at well, what are we going to do? And it went back to our purpose, our mission, our values, and our core competencies. And as you just said very well, we have a core competency in delivering great plant based food. Uh, you know, we dive deep into every uh, available source of plant-based ingredients, new products, and we deliver them at Veggie Grill in one kind of menu. Because in the restaurant world, menu uh, restaurants stand for a certain style of food. And Veggie Grill is the classic American grill: sandwiches, bowls, salads, and burgers. But we said, hey, there's you know, given where we are in the plant-based movement and what we can deliver uh, from our core company standpoint. The world is ready and we can deliver great Mexican plant-based food and deliver a great breadth of menu there. And we can deliver a purely burger focused uh, plant-based concept. And so, um, yeah, we, we were pretty, we, we really uh, do have a platform now that we're really uh, bullish on, uh, but it did take uh, COVID to help us rethink where we are and where we want to go. How how has consumer behavior changed? I mean, you've been you've been had a, a very keen eye on on consumer behavior on and how people eat vegetables and 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 feel about eating vegetarian fare. Uh, probably the best the best thing you can do is not call it vegetarian fare. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's a similar kind of thing happening with our business. Sorry, um, and I guess my question is: Have you seen any noticeable changes in how? consumers relate to vegetarian food and 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 how it comes to your brand and like are people much more open to consuming vegetarian food in 2022 right. like has what has changed there yeah it's it's a, it's a quantum shift from where we were in 2006 where we were just trying to 
convince people, hey, vegetarian food can actually taste, can be satisfying. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, with the plethora of uh, products that have been developed beyond meat and impossible uh, foods leading the way, but now you've got uh, vegan cheeses, vegan bacon, uh, vegan fish. Uh, there are some great products out there, and they're getting better and better every year. Uh, the, the, the benefits of plant-based, the awareness of it, there have been great documentaries from Forks Over Knives to Game Changers to, to quite a few others. Both the products, the awareness of the benefits uh, has led to a lot more adoption. And that adoption then starts creating societal shifts towards their attitude on uh, uh, vegetarian and vegan fare. So um, we don't, look to your point, we don't call it that because it's great food that just happens to be plant-based and provide all the benefits plant-based gives you. But there's a lot more people who understand those benefits and want to want to want to eat food that gives them those benefits. Now, um, you are a you are the founding partner of Power Plant Partners uh, started in 2015. It's uh, an equity growth equity fund. Can you tell us a little bit about that and and how that came to be? It it sounds like it's a, a nice extension of your mission to make, I guess, make people eat healthier food in a way that's satisfying for them. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, uh, to your point, it did uh, extend out of everything we I was doing at Veggie Grill, uh, really leading, being a leader in the plant-based movement, uh, uh, Veggie Grill being uh, the largest restaurant company and delivering the greatest new products to consumers in, in the best way possible. And by doing that, we did see these great new products. And I had a firsthand view of all of these new products coming to market and, uh, and having developed one of the leading brands. Uh, these entrepreneurs were coming to me and my partner Kevin from Veggie Grill uh, on how to uh, how do we how do they advance how do they uh, advance their brands and, and how do they raise capital and that led to and at that point we had as I mentioned brought on a nice seasoned restaurant team here at uh, Veggie Grill and so we were able to move to uh, more board chairman roles and so I uh, as you mentioned I'm continuing as executive chairman but uh, in the meantime you know we had uh, the opportunity to start a fund to really provide capital and just as importantly, strategic guidance to uh, emerging uh, purpose-led companies that deliver great uh, benefits from a health and sustainability standpoint by delivering plant-based products in all these different forms and functions. And so Power Plant uh, Partners was born and it's done, done quite well based on everything that's happening in the plant-based world. And so it's great to have that uh, uh, perspective as well. And there's a lot of synergy because we're seeing the greatest new uh, products here at Veggie Grill and vice versa. When we see any new product from Power Plant, we were able to uh, hopefully get it on the Veggie Grill menu as quickly as possible. Right. And I imagine you have a, a test opportunity, right? When you get a new great product, uh, you could see how well, how well it does at the, at the Veggie Grill. Yeah. yeah. Which gives you probably some really great insights about the future potential. Yeah. Sure. So, when you when you look at when you look at growth for Veggie Grill, right? Like, what are some of the key strategies and tactics that you've deployed um, that really get people get butts in seats, uh, place in orders at uh, at Veggie Grill? What, what, yeah, so, what's been growing there? Yeah. So in the early days, it was all about food and mouth, right? It, it didn't make sense to go market uh, to the masses. Hey, come and eat uh, vegetarian plant based food because 50 plus percent of those masses when they heard that wouldn't want to come in so it was all about getting our food in people's mouths and showing them how delicious this food could be and then giving them a reason to come come back in so it was a lot of grassroots uh, uh marketing and getting our fans who already love this food to bring their uh friends and family who who weren't uh really uh, open to this type of food just to get them bring give them incentives to come in like we're actually uh, day after tomorrow, well, I, I'm not sure when you're airing, but on Wednesday, uh, the 12th, uh, we're, we're doing a plant, uh, a, a plant-based rookie day. Uh, you know, any veggie, any person who hasn't, uh, doesn't really eat plant-based, bring them into veggie grill, uh, on VG rookie day and we'll treat them, you know, we'll, mm. buy email and we'll treat them. And so it's kind of core, Hey, just get people to try this food, experience it and, uh, let that do the talking. And uh, so we're going to continue to build on that. But now, as we talked about, there's a lot more adoption and awareness of plant-based uh, today. And so we're going to get a little bit more aggressive on the marketing side. We were, were able to raise uh, a nice round of funding 
uh, a few months ago, and they're starting to put in plans, put in the plans to start getting more aggressive marketing wise. So yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, so, so, I mean, you have PR, you have publicity, you have paid media, you have social is, is a lot of word of mouth part of, part of that equation there? Yes. Because, uh, uh, people generally, when they're picking restaurants, go with recommendations from uh, from their peers, from their friends, and so certainly there it, it's you've got to and in in today's digital age, there's a lot of influencer type uh, marketing and getting the right influencers to try your uh, try your food, and uh, uh, but at the same time, there's awareness, so it's kind of putting that right blend together, and we're a larger company now than when we. We were, we were a few years ago, so we have more capital. We have a little bit uh, more bandwidth to play in all those different categories. So it's about putting the right mix together. But at the end of the day, it starts and ends with the food and experience in our restaurants and making sure that's great. And that's a big piece of the marketing, because like you said, when somebody experiences that, then they'll spread the word. And they'll spread the word. I'm looking at your site right now. Holy cow, the Cajun catfish. The, the Cajun fish and the crispy buffalo chicken looks fantastic. And I am, there's one in Encino. I'm, I'm going to try it. I go to, I, I eat a lot of fish at Katsuya. So I'm going to stop by at Veggie Grill next time I go down there. And, Beautiful. and yeah, I think you'll, think you'll be pleasantly surprised. How, how do you, how, tell us like, how do you, de- how, what's the development process? How do you develop like vegetarian catfish food? <laughs> that seems like, I have no idea where to even start with that. Yeah, I mean, it's not that much different than how you <laughs> create uh, regular meals. You just you figure out what products are out there, right? You know, so, hey, there's this great new uh, plant-based fish from a company called Good Catch. And so we get the patties and we see, wow, the texture's great. Now, how do we add the right flavors and prep to make it even better, to make it compelling and uh, as good, if not better, than the real thing? And so that's where all the core culinary work comes in, where we're looking at the different uh uh, marinades, the different sauces, the different prep techniques. And, uh, and so it all, you know, it goes back to, because that's our total focus is like, yeah, you know, let's say Chipotle is pretty good at Mexican food. Cause that's all they focus on. And mm-hmm. Starbucks is pretty good at coffee. Cause that's all that they focus on. We're really good at taking these plant-based products and delivering them in their best form. Cause that's all we focus on. On your LinkedIn profile, you talk about conscious capitalism. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like how you would define conscious capitalism and what what we can take away from 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 your view on conscious capitalism? Sure. Um, you know, there's a broad ESG mandate going on that covers a lot of pieces around governance and um, uh, and what your you know your carbon footprints and uh, in in a lot of different areas. But in a simple form. I look at it as, is this business helping the world uh, become a better place? And so, you know, I've been fortunate enough to have have some success and and that led me to Veggie Grill, which I became very passionate about based on what I thought were huge benefits, both from a health uh, and environmental standpoint, let alone kind of a lot of the uh, animal uh, issues involved with factory farming. And so I became very passionate and, um, And then what I've kind of learned through time is uh, business is the most sustainable form of change, right? Mm -hmm. Capitalism is a, is a huge, has tremendous power. And so, and, and what's great now is a lot of entrepreneurs, my good friend, Ethan at Beyond Meat being a great example, are passionately focused on solving big problems that, uh, you know, that then make the world a better place. And so that's what I look at as conscious capitalism. How do you, how do you leverage business to solve big problems? Very cool. And in the last minute here, uh, tell us about all the places that people can go and eat your food, whether it's Veggie Grill or Mas Veggies. Tell us all the places we can find you. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, yeah, we're, a lot of locations in the LA area. We've got about 12 in, in LA County. We've got a, several in Orange County, a couple in San Diego County, uh, five up in no- Northern California Bay Area. Uh, including a stand-up burgers in Berkeley. We've got uh, two in Portland, two in Seattle, uh, veggie grills. We've got stand-up burgers, two of them in Chicago. Uh, mm. we've just, uh, we just recently launched veggie grills in New York and Boston, so our first East Coast presence. 
Uh, so yeah, we're you know we're continuing to grow and looking to expand, but those are the markets we're in right now. And can you share the websites? Uh, so veggiegrill.com, veggiegrill.com, eatmossveggies.com, and standupburgers.com. Awesome, TK Pillen, founder and executive chairman of Veggie Grill. Thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, Robert, thank you. It's been great to be here. Thank you for listening to this episode of the LA Business Podcast. If you like what we're doing on this podcast, please consider subscribing on Apple or Google Play, leaving a five-star review, and sharing with your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for a guest you'd like to hear on this podcast, please email me, robert at brillmedia.co. Thank you. Have a fantastic day.